Hello, we're back with Mammalian Orders Part 1. We're going to start taking a look at some of these things. But before we do, um, I wanted to run something by you, just a thought. And as I was recording, my wife actually said, hey, it's Palm Sunday. And it just got me thinking. Um, I wanted to share just a verse with you out of the book of Zechariah, uh, chapter 9, verse number 9. It says, Rejoice greatly, O daughters of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughters of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming unto you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. Um, it goes on and it says, The Lord will appear over them, his arrow like lightning, the sound of thunder, whirlwinds. Um, this is amazing. When you consider the fact that Jesus um, walks in to Jerusalem on a uh, donkey and, um, and people pour um, all sorts of things on the ground before him, um, particularly palms, where we get the idea of Palm Sunday, um, they envisioned him um, taking over and conquering Roman rule. But in reality, he was providing salvation in a very different manner, one they did not expect. Um, I think that we should keep that in mind. Um, but anyway, uh, it's food for thought. Um, the Malian Orders, this is going to be split into at least one other video, if not more. Um, because there's a couple things we need to talk about. Um, so, well, let's, so let's start at the beginning. Recently, evolutionists have begun to recategorize mammalian orders. Our text uses traditional Linnaean classification. So you take a look at these orders. These are traditional. Now, the only ones you need to know are the ones that are um, underlined. Um, but there is some reclassification. Well, why would they change things? Well, um, recently, as we have begun synthesizing um, the genetic codes of many different animals around the world are finding out that their genomes are pretty similar, uh, which makes sense with a god who designed all things, he'd probably make all things similar. The things that we didn't expect to be similar are very similar, and uh, things which are seemingly unrelated have very um, close genetic code, and so evolutionists say, well, they must be related. So they're putting things together in the same orders, like I think one of the crazy ones is like a hippo and like a, uh, I think it's a hippo and a horse or something, saying they have very similar ancestries and evolved very, um, very uh, recently from each other. That just doesn't make sense. Um, and so these orders may be a little bit different if you consult a newer evolutionary text. Um, but these are definitely um, orders that are recognized by mainstream science. The first one that you need to know is Sirenia, the sea cows, a dugong manatee. We're very, some, we're very familiar with manatees, of course, in Manatee County. Uh, these are named after uh, the sirens, um, which um, the name of the book, uh, Iliad and Odyssey, um, I believe um, the captain of which um, listened to a siren sing, which they were supposed to um, uh, uh, bring sailors into the ocean and, and kill them. But, um, of course, it's a fictitious story. The sirens were actually manatees, which look nothing like mermaids. So, anyway. Uh, Monotremata are known as the egg-laying um, order. Uh, very strange mammals, like the platypus and the echidna. Um, and uh, a couple other ones, um, uh, Zenarthra, etc. Um, but the main one you need to know is uh, marsup the marsupials. Um, marsupilia is the pouched mammals like the koala, kangaroo. Um, those are very different. Um, monotremes, monotremata, um, and the marsupials. Uh, kind of strange mammals. Um, Mammalian order special terms. Uh, tusk is the ivory trunk with an elephant's. Um, some are diurnal, ter um, active during the day. 
Some are nocturnal, active during, of course, the night. Um, on this test, we're going to have animal recognition. And um, boy, I hope that you can <laughs> name some of these animals. Now, some of them, of course, are going to be a little bit... Uh, um, a little bit different, and not as easy as something like an aardvark or an elephant. Um, and of course, with taking your test at home, I think that you can just consult your book and um, do the animal recognition, but um, your textbook really wants to make a point that you know what these animals are. And um, we're going to do this with birds too, bird recognition. So anyway, I kind of like this. Uh, aardvark, of course, uh, known for digging holes, eating termites um, on the left. Elephant, large, tusks of ivory. Uh, dugong, sea cow of the Indian Ocean, uh, look very similar and act very similar to the manatee of uh, the coastal Americas. Of course, we have them all over the place here in Manatee County. Um, they're the larger sea cows of um, the Americas. You have the echidna, uh, the spiny anteater, as it's uh, better known as it burrows, lays eggs. One of the only egg-laying mammals, along with the platypus, it's a waterproof swimmer with a bill used to scoop dirt. It also lays eggs. Um, you have armadillo, uh, meaning little armored one in Spanish, um, covered in plates. Slaws, which you should be able to pretty easily identify, spend a majority of their lives upside down. Pretty slow creatures. I think that they uh, they move about seven feet an hour, uh, if I have my facts straight. It's pretty uh, pretty slow. They also have the most vertebrae of any animals, I believe. Ant eaters eats thirty thousand ants each day. Has a very long tongue. And uh, pangolin, scaly ant eater, rolls into a ball when scared. Um, uh, this is actually an endangered. I believe, animal, uh, the scaly anteater, and um, is one of the ones that China is pretty concerned may pass a virus to humans um, because it's sold illegally on wet markets in China. You have the wombat, large body resembles a groundhog, has a pouch, uh, making it a marsupial. And the numbat, eating termites, having a pouch and claws, also a marsupial. And that's it for Mammalian Orders Part 1. I divided it into different parts just because there's a whole lot of mammal orders. And um, I didn't want you getting overwhelmed with each of these. Part 2 is a larger section. You have insectivora, insect-eating mammals, like the mole and the shrew. You have chiroterra. Um, chiroterra is a flying mammal, like a fruit bat. Consider chiro means hand, like you go to the chiropractor, uses his hands to crack your back. Terra means wing, hand wing. Their hands are functional as wings instead of as hands like ours are. Um, C to C are the marine animals like the whale, the dolphin. Um, they live full-time in the ocean, but are air-breathing. The whale does have to come up for air every once in a while. And I remember that just through a, uh, you take a look at this word, see the sea, see a sea, you know, just sounds like a sea to sea, kind of cool. Primates, uh, tree-dwelling mammals, such as the ring-tailed lemur, and the gibbon, uh, rodentia, gnawing mammals like the beaver, rat, red squirrel, they're rodents. And a uh, last important one in this section is lagomorpha, uh, mammals with uh, four incisors um, as, as, their, um, as their piercing teeth, the hare, the rabbit, etc. And... Uh, for whatever reason, what helps me remember Lagomorpha is that I uh, I hate lag in video games, just like I hate rabbits. I just don't like them. My wife looks at me like, 
Yes, like I'm a so terrible cute. person. I hate them. <sighs> they're a plague to society. So. <laughs> you are a plague to society. I am a plague to society. Um, special terms in this section. Many primates have prehensile tails, meaning they can control and use them to grasp things. Um, we do not have a prehensile tail, fortunately, um, but many primates do. Bats use echolocation to identify and track prey. Usually they are harmless, but some bats carry the rabies virus. Usually we think of a rabid squirrel or a rabid dog carrying rabies, but most rabies infections are from um, actually bats. Rabies is actually a very terrible disease. Um, they really don't have too much of a cure for it. Yeah, if you do have the rabies virus and you go to the hospital, there's like a, uh, Mrs. Bernie was telling me about this 15 like point injection they give you. They give you all kinds of injections. But, um, but really once rabies has, has started to do its work, it's, it's just about 100% kill rate. Um, not good. Um, anyway, I also, I also, um, was reading an article. Uh, people say bats echolocation is an incredible feat of evolution and how, um, bats fly around caves and they never hit anything. And that's just not true. Bats actually are, uh, they, they put up a, um, a very cool thermal imaging thing in a, in a cave to take a look at bats and how they use echolocation. Turns out they uh, smack into things a lot, so it's not perfect. Continuing on with our animal recognition, um, of course we have the dolphin, the sea-dwelling mammal with the snout. Um, maybe you've seen a dolphin. Um, I've seen quite a few of them. You have a porpoise, a little bit different than a dolphin, sea-dwelling, but does not have a snout. Um, kind of looks a little strange, too. Uh, gorilla. Not very hostile, but huge. Eats vegetation. Gorillas get a bad rap. That they're some terrible, evil creature. Uh, but really, they're, they're pretty, um, pretty calm. And they only really fight each other. That is a silverback gorilla. Um, the oldest gorilla in a troop uh, starts to develop a silverback to show that it is the alpha male. You have an orangutan, uh, orange hair, arboreal, meaning that it is tree-dwelling tree and has a unique um, orange hair and uh, pretty wide face. Strange-looking beard, too. Uh, you have a chimpanzee, very intelligent. It's a smaller ape. Um, of course, um, many evolutionists claim that these are our ancestors and... Um, Sorry, evolutionist. I don't think I look too much like that, so... I look more like the gibbon. Or uh, no, the uh, orangutan. So, uh, Capybara. South American rodent, no threat. It's very tameable. Um, I was asking Nicholas Dos Santos about this one. He said, oh yeah, they're everywhere in Brazil. Um, so they're kind of a strange-looking rodent, but you can have them as a pet if you want. Um, they're pretty, pretty tame, no threat. Um, animal, animal recognition. Uh, you have the pika. Sounds like um, how they got Pikachu, and it actually is. Strangely enough, they get it from this um, animal. It's a small rabbit look-alike. Um, has the ability to hibernate. It is not a member of Lagomorpha, however, but it does look very similar to a rabbit. Um, and the hyrax, also known as a coney, defenseless, and lives in rocks. When we start the next lesson, we're going to talk about a, uh, a biblical lesson we can learn from the coney. So, take a look at that in uh, tomorrow, and I hope that you have a pretty good day and that you enjoyed this lecture. Make sure you um, spend some time putting these different animals in animal recognition to memory. All right, sayonara.